So why in the world do you need to stay in shape to have life on a sailboat? Isn't it like the best and most healthy lifestyle there is? Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today, we're talking about flexible fitness and flexible being in shape doesn't only have anything to do with your body. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Rainman Watermakers and SeaTask. Rainman Watermakers are capable of producing up to 37 gallons of fresh, clean drinking water per hour from seawater. Portable and installed models are available, all with off-the-shelf parts. Configurations are available in AC, 12-volt DC, and even a gasoline system, with new 2019 models being smaller, lighter, and quieter than ever. SeaTask is the premier U.S. facility for Rainman Watermakers. Visit them at www.seataskgroup.com to learn more. That's SeaTask Group, S-E-A-T-A-S-K, G-R-O-U-P dot com. There is one absolutely amazing myth about the cruising lifestyle, and that is that it is incredibly healthy. And sure, there are parts to that. You're outside a whole lot. You are generally eating food that you've made yourself. It's a lot harder to just have the pizza place on speed dial. What I wanted to do was to share with you the story of a recent weekend's worth of work that I did on the boat and why I think it highlights the incredible importance of being in shape to be on the boat. You might already know we're totally redoing the interior of Calypso in preparation for our upcoming cruise. We've ripped out a whole chunk of the inside of the boat And while we are starting to build things back up, there's still quite a bit more that we have to rip out. It's just a little hard to do that when we live three hours away from the boat. Part of the other challenge on our boat is that it's small, which means that sometimes when we're working on a certain spot, there's not really space for two people to work on it at the same time. And granted, probably if you're listening to this, you're going to be in a boat that's slightly larger than ours. But some of the same principles apply. Even if you're on a pretty big boat, there are spaces you have to get into that are really small. So this past weekend, Jeremy was fiberglassing wood tabs onto the hull. And he was busy cutting and measuring and and really measuring and measuring and measuring and fitting and measuring and fitting and measuring and fitting and then cutting and debating to go the best way about it. And there wasn't a whole lot that I could do to help him with that. So I decided it was time to tackle more galley destruction. Time to start going after some of the stuff that just was still there. Now our galley goes underneath the side deck and I had already ripped out the cabin, the countertops, but I needed to get underneath the deck to do that. And it would be a lot easier to do that if I was on my back kind of looking up as opposed to trying to reach under and get my head underneath there and try to deal with screwdrivers and that sort of thing. So how was I going to lie flat on my back when I had removed all the countertops? Well, I looked around And I saw that we had our kind of closed cell foam cockpit cushions that are stored down below when we're not actually in the cockpit. Great. Laid them on there. They actually served as a rigid enough surface with the bulkheads that are still in place in the galley that I could lie on that. Awesome. The second step was to figure out what tools I was going to need. There was a tiny little piece of wood that was tucked way up under there that had served to anchor a kind of a mini bulkhead. We used to have doors that hinged down to access the the outboard storage in the galley. We've already taken the doors and the main bulkhead out of there, but there was still a strip of wood that was there. And I didn't want to go in there and then have to come out any more frequently than I really needed to. So I looked and I said, all right, I'm going to need a chisel, hammer, both screwdrivers, both a Phillips head and a flathead because I don't know what the screws are going to be. And a crowbar, sure, why not? might have to come in there. So got those things all together, put them on a spot that I could access while I was on my back because there isn't a whole lot of space between where I had laid the cockpit cushions down and the deck underneath. We just don't have a whole lot of space there. Step three was to get into position. And this was way easier said than done. I had to sit on the engine cover, which actually still has the countertop on it. We haven't taken that off yet. Swing my legs around inch my butt backwards, all the while really hoping that my cockpit cushions were truly going to hold and not just buckle and drop me down into a pile of weird stuff that is in the spots that the cabinets used to be, and get under the deck. 
I had about mm, 15 or 16 inches of space to work in. So I could get myself under there and I could actually move my arms and get my arm underneath so that I could work the screwdriver there. And once there, I could actually then visibly see what I was trying to do. Um, didn't look like there were any obvious screw holes. And was it just on with glue? That it could be, that's kind of weird. Holy cow, as I looked more closely, there are bungs. Somebody had spent a whole lot of time to countersink a piece of wood that would never be seen by any human being until the person went to take it out and then bung each fastener hole. Talk about an overbuilt boat. Wow. Or somebody who was really excited about what they were doing and really was a craftsman in there, but wow, that was a little overkill. It took chiseling out each bung, getting the screwdriver, and of course, they weren't all the same. There were a couple that were flathead and a couple that were Phillips. Getting the screwdriver positioned in there properly, unscrewing each of the six fasteners along the 42-inch length piece of wood before I could pry the piece of wood off. But I wound up getting it off, got myself from under, out from underneath the deck, and I was able to help Jeremy with sanding and epoxy work, which then he was ready to do. But here's the thing. It took flexibility, both mental flexibility to think of the solution to the no flat surface problem, as well as the flexibility to say, oh my God, it's got to be a bung because it can't just be glued in here. And it took, you know, I needed my glasses. That was the other tool that I needed was my glasses to look. Luckily, I had grabbed them and brought them with me. And it also took physical flexibility to get myself into the right spot. It took strength because have you tried holding a screwdriver over your head for 45 minutes and holding it hard when you don't have a whole lot of room to hold your arms up? And endurance. Is this something that we have to do every single day on the boat? No, but I will say that being flexible and being in shape means that I can do these kinds of projects by myself. And that adds to the enjoyment and pride of ownership. I know that every time I look in the galley, I'm going to know that I had a very big part in taking the things apart to be able to put in the new stuff that we want. So yeah, absolutely. Get yourself in shape. It's worth it for all kinds of reasons. I can't wait to see you out there. Thanks for listening. And thanks again to our sponsor, Rainman Watermakers and Desalination Systems. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for the Boat Galley Podcast. And reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Slow down, slow down.